Welcome to the Office Industrial Connection. I'm your host, Blake McCool, here with a very special guest today, real estate attorney, Chris Sullivan. How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing well, Blake. Thanks so much for having me on, and I'm excited to be here today. Absolutely, absolutely. And I know you've, you've worked with a few, pe- few people that uh, Cody has also worked with in the past. Can you kind of give us a brief highlight of what you do? So uh, I'm a real estate attorney local. We, we have offices in Flower Mound and North Dallas. Uh, spend probably 90% of my time uh, handling general real estate law. Uh, I operate a fee office with Alamo Title Company. So uh, we're regularly involved in transactions, helping negotiate um, purchase and sale contracts, leases, and drafting the same. Uh, in addition to that, I spent about 10% of my time doing general business law because it's uh, an area that I really enjoy as well. Great, great. And, and you do that all throughout DFW primarily, correct? Correct. So we have offices right now in Flower Mountain and North Dallas. We do have plans to expand, but we service clients throughout the entire state of Texas. That's awesome. Um, as far as, you know, kind of the main issues that you tend to run across when you do work with real estate owners, what, what are some of those? Well, that's a loaded question, <laughs> especially now uh, considering COVID-19. Uh, we try to provide a turnkey solution for um, investors and building owners. Uh, one of the attorneys that works for me, his name's Kent Canada, and he has a, a storied career in real estate law. Um, so we, we draw a lot of uh, experience from him. And so he, he's our gray hair. He helps us out whenever we have any <laughs> questions. But the, typically, the majority of what we do is we, we help landlords understand their options and we help investors understand uh, how to ensure asset success, as much as they can. Um, The risks associated with investments uh, from the standpoint of, will it be able to um, meet their needs? Um, Not just financially, but uh, overall as a long-term investment. Um, And really, like I said previously, we, we try to be turnkey. So if there's something that comes up that we can't handle, we have a strong referral group of attorneys that can take that work on. So uh, we, we're just always there to help in, in any way that's necessary. But uh, the main things that we do are reading and negotiating leases, reading and negotiating uh, purchase and sale agreements, um, doing the same with uh, reviewing title commitments uh, and exception documents and providing analysis of that um, to help uh, purchasers understand their risk. So really we, we play around a lot in the um, uh, real estate investment and, and purchasing field. Uh, other things we do is we help structure uh, transactions. So when I say transactions, what I really mean is we help structure the entities that people use to uh, purchase these properties. Uh, and we help people bring, come together as investment groups to purchase properties as well. That's great. Um, so, it, you know, you're pretty specialized as an attorney who focuses mainly in real estate. That's kind of similar to what we do. You know, we spend a lot of time uh, working with owners, advising them like you do on their investments. Um, you know, just like you, you wouldn't want to be uh, representing someone who's doing something other than something real estate related. We only work on investment properties and we refer people to leasing agents and, and you for the legal side of things. So it's, it's very key there, both with what you do and what we do to have a specialist uh, in both fields. So as far as, you know, advising a group, what you were saying earlier, advising a group to invest together, how would you do that? so that they can achieve their investment goals? Well, it really depends on how, how large the investment group is, but the majority of what we see is, you know, five or 10 people who want to come together and um, make an investment. Sometimes it's a little fewer people than that, but we really try to advise them to understand that they're going to have to, you know, they're going to have to work together and understand uh, exactly what they're getting themselves into. So we sit down with people and walk them through that. We walk them through an operating agreement and partnership agreements so they can understand what it is that their responsibilities are going to be and what risks that they're going to encounter 
whether it is what happens if you have one partner who wants to sell his interest or if you have a partner who passes away. Um, we walk through all of those situations with them up front so they can make a more intelligent investment decision uh, because all of those things come into play whenever you're uh, putting money into a, a project because if you have, you, you might have three or four really close friends or business partners that you want to invest in, but you need to understand every single thing about the transaction and how management works prior to getting into those um, uh, investments. So some of the things that we'll do is if it's a, a first time for the uh, group to invest together, we'll sit down and walk them through that operating agreement, help them understand the way things uh, work. A better word is operate. Um, <laughs> and if it's a group that has invested together before and they're looking to, um, you know, take on more and more investments, we'll help them set up a series LLC, walk them through uh, the aspects of that and allow them to understand how that helps them from a, um, tax standpoint to the best of our ability. We, we bring in CPAs for the majority of that. Uh, but when it comes to structuring, that's one of the better ways to do it because it can reduce their overall, um, I don't want to say tax burden, but it can reduce their overall tax headache because they only have one true entity and then there's different cells within that entity um, that will all flow into one major entity and it allows them more control and flexibility without the headache of having 15 different entities that they need to keep track of. Well, that's great. That's great. And it, it seems like you've done a really good job of, you know, saving people money and, and really helping them out on that. And we, um, we actually have been working with, you know, we, we still have listings on market and, and things of that nature, even in spite of COVID-19 and everything that's been going on. But a lot of people don't realize you know, A, that they can save money through some of the things that you were talking about and, and B, that they're missing out uh, on making money. You know, we, we actually just sold a property recently that was previously listed for half a million dollars lower than what we sold it for. And they didn't realize what they were missing out on just because they were misinformed and didn't have the right information from, you know, people such as yourself and, and our team here. And I think that's very important. Um, as far as COVID-19 affecting what you do, have you seen a transition here in the past few weeks and, and what you've been work, working on and focusing on? So, yes, uh, a lot because we've been highly involved in keeping track of what's going on with the shelter in place order. So that's taken up a lot of my time over the past few weeks. Um, so that, that's been a bit of a distraction with everything that we normally do because it, it does affect the market so much. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the major things that we're seeing happen uh, because of COVID-19 is landlords struggling to deal with tenants who don't have the ability to pay their rent and how they handle those situations. So we've been spending a good bit of time talking through those scenarios with um, building owners, landlords, management to understand the uh, options that are best available for them in this situation. Uh, so that's, that's actually taken up a lot of our time. Our building owners have been reaching out. Um, I, I can imagine that. Yes. Um, as far as, you know, I know on the, title side of things that that you obviously might be seeing some retrades right now and might not be seeing as many closings uh what assets have you seen close more and and have you seen retrades so we'll address the retrades first um mm -hmm. in a lot of situations we we haven't been seeing retrades we've been seeing terminations um however retrades are still happening especially in the retail sector because um you have these purchase contracts and banks are wanting to see certain amounts of reserves. And one of the ways to uh, help reduce that requirement for additional reserves due to the lack of income is to reduce the overall purchase price. So we are seeing retrades in that area, but overall mostly terminations because there is so much speculation or I don't know if fear is the correct word in the commercial market, but so much speculation as what's going to as to what's going to happen over the next three months and what's going to happen in six, seven, eight months whenever we get into the fall 
is, is this something that's going to happen again? Are we going to have to enter into another uh, shelter in place period? So um, there's just so much speculation when it comes to what's going to happen with the market. So it's led to a lot of terminations and retrades. When it comes to uh, asset classes that are the most highly valued right now and, and moving the most, it, it comes down to y'all specialty, industrial <laughs> and, and warehouses, man. Um, so we're, we're seeing that's going to become more and more important over the next few years, especially if um, manufacturing starts to make a comeback here in the U.S. But even if it doesn't, warehousing in general for products is going to uh, become bigger and bigger. So, for example, if you look at um, uh, the last mile logistics, that's constantly expanded since 2008. And with shelter in place, home delivery has exponentially increased. And if you want to talk about the one company that has dominated in last mile logistics, it's Amazon. Um, they have centers oh, yeah. located within 20 miles of half of the U.S. population. So they've really done a good job of getting set up for that. And that's part of the reason why they're hiring. Uh, I think I saw that the number was somewhere around 100,000 employees. It's I think you're right. Yes. Yeah. Because of their bill, they, they've set up for this. They're an online business. They, they set up for this and, and it's benefiting them. Um, oh, they're making, but, I'm sure they're making a killing from all this. Yeah, probably so. <laughs> um, so there is positive um, news from all of this. You know, COVID-19 isn't just, there's a lot of negative, but for some people there, there's positive in this too. So and if, if home delivery demand stays after this crisis, um, then demand for last mile locations will greatly increase. But to circle back the asset property, asset group that is uh, most highly valued and hot right now is, is industrial and warehouse. Yes, and we and we have actually worked on several new projects that are still getting you know pretty solid activity in spite of this. And actually, uh, two Mondays ago, we we did close out one um, that was over in North Dallas and didn't have any coronavirus discount or anything like that for that one. But um, COVID you special, know, yeah, COVID nineteen special, but. Yeah. As far as, um, I know we were talking about shelter in place a second ago. I know you, you wrote an article on that recently and kind of your frustrations with it. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit more? Oh, you're opening Pandora's <laughs> box, my friend. <laughs> I have been so highly frustrated with this, um, mainly because, you know, I, I'm a, I operate a title office, so it does affect me whenever my partner's yes. not able to work. But it frustrates me as well from the, um, just the disregard for the rule of law um, and our Texas and U.S. Constitution by local leaders has really driven me up the wall. We're, we're actually working on uh, filing our uh, petition for writ of mandamus. Um, I received an email a few minutes before this um, call that has the, the final version for me to review as well as the affidavit. So I'm going to be taking a look at that this afternoon, but local leaders, just especially Dallas County judge Clay Jenkins has made it appear that real estate professionals are not professionals and that they need to be babysat, that they have to be policed and told what to do in order to keep their clients safe and that's just the furthest thing from the truth. I've, I've stated that from the beginning, and it's, it's been a real frustrating thing for me to watch over the past month or so because it affects my friends and it, uh, it affects me. So we're, we're very optimistic that this will begin to um, loosen more and more, but just some of the restrictions placed on real estate professionals, it's borne unequally by real estate professionals versus other essential businesses. So that, that's what we care about. We, we, we know that our real estate professional friends have the ability to keep their clients safe and that they're not going to put them in situations that could harm them. Um, so just the fact that there's so much, I guess the, the right word is fear being spread um, by these shelter in place orders that so much fear I think negatively affects um, our partners like you and we don't like that and we won't see that fear um, 
removed and we want people to know that it's possible and very much necessary to go out and to continue um, uh, purchasing not only uh, commercial space for our, our critical infrastructure businesses, but also residences. So people have shelter. So oh, definitely. And, you know, I think especially the residential side, they've already had virtual tours and, and things like that set up that are totally, you know, illness proof. Um, and, you know, on the commercial side, we've been working on that as well. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are totally fine with just looking at financials and seeing photos and we don't have to necessarily do a lot of person to person uh, interaction, you know, face to face, but I definitely True. think, you know, real estate's going to be transacting uh, no matter what. And it's very crucial to our economy overall here in Texas and the U S. Okay. So, um, you know, lastly, what, did you kind of want to let people know specifically about you uh, before, before we conclude here? Uh, well, just, you know, thanks again for having me on. Um, what I want people to know is that we're here to help. Uh, our main goal is to be a resource for uh, our partners. So whether it's uh, people like you or building owners, uh, landlords, tenants, we're here to be a resource. So, if you ever need anything, you, you can pretty much reach me anytime. A um, uh, few things personally, I'm from Louisiana. I love LSU football. Uh, so last night was a good night for me. Go Tigers. <laughs> My first round draft pick should have been seven. Um, uh, I love uh, gumbo, crawfish. I uh, love to fish, love to hunt. Um, if you're looking for someone to have fun with, you know, and, and you want to go hunting or fishing, please do remember me. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'd love, love to go with you and uh, lo lo always looking for buddies that want to do that. Um, also love uh, good whiskey, um, scotch, bourbon, and um, playing poker. So Texas Hold'em is my game. So once all of this shelter in place uh, stuff is over, I can't wait to get a big group together um, and, and do exactly that. So Definitely. we're here to help. Uh, everything real estate related. And if it's something that I don't know, I'm the first to say, I don't know everything, but I will absolutely find you the answer. Um, so we're, we're just here to be a resource. Well, great. That's, that's awesome. I'm also looking forward to, you know, the casinos reopening Windstar yeah. and, and everything else over here. Um, you know, thank you so much for, for giving us all this valuable information that we discussed today, Chris, we really appreciate you uh, taking the time, especially with everything that you're working on right now. And, you know, obviously look forward to working with you again in the future and, and maybe having you on the show again as well. Uh -huh. um, you know, stay tuned next week, guys. We got another great podcast, another great show. Cody Payne is going to be talking with the great Yona Weiss. Nice. <laughs>